Hello everyone, Busy Gamer Dad back again, picking up where we left off with our Across the Obelisk session gameplay series, where we do a three-part video on a game each week that is a good game to pick up and put down for busy gamers who need to do some adulting, fold some laundry, take care of the dishes, walk the dog, take care of the kids and the spouses and significant others, and then come back and unwind with a game. This week we're looking at Across the Obelisk. This is going to be the second video, I believe for our playthrough. Um, the first one just got us to right here where we're in a uh, basement and the narrative said that we have a choice to play this obelisk corruption. This is a random event. It's nothing that you have to take, but it does offer some pretty hefty rewards at a price. The difficulty scales down here and this one's at hard. I think the last one we got was like extreme or something like that. And you know, you should always look at what they're offering and making sure that it's a fit for what you currently have going on. Like if your party's like wounded and like limping, don't take these fights. They're not that uh, integral to your overall success. In fact, they're kind of meant as that carrot stick mechanic where you're just like, oh yeah, this is great. I could really do this. But then if you mess up, it punishes you hard for losing uh, or trying something that you went uh, reaching for. I mean, each hero can upgrade a card for free. That's a huge upgrade. That would definitely be worth it. An exotic item shop, that'd be really worth it. But looking at our gold, it's not worth it because I know that we don't have enough to really buy anything. Yeah. And I think that we're really not going to get ourselves any big gain from taking this fight. So I'm actually just going to choose the third option, which is just continue as normal. Not very climactic, I know, and it's not very intense, but it'll help with the overall success of our run that we have going. This is actually not bad. Not bad at all, I think, if I get rid of that one. Uh, and then I'm going to armor up. So, I know I haven't been reading the cards, and that's just because I want you guys to play this game on your own. But, you know, we have our quintessential uh, party here. We have our tank, our Magnus werewolf, uh, big bad guy in the front with the shield and the sword. We have our scout, who's our roguey bard class kind of character where they have um you know uh, ranged attacks and melee attacks bleed attacks and songs that they could uh, potentially draw and you can build into their deck then we have evelyn our caster our wizard um they're currently you know very neutral with their uh, uh fire lightning and ice uh spells and then we have reginald our, our healer or holy damage dealer um, so whenever you play this game, you start off in town and you can certainly, uh, use your run, uh, money and gold or money and uh, crystals to, uh, augment the decks and make them however you want. I didn't do that this run just cause again, I wanted to show you guys what, uh, the game looks like from a very almost near vanilla kind of play style, if that makes any sense. Um, so I didn't do a lot of heavy modifications. I just picked up a few cards here and there. And then what you see like here, this purple card was one that we got the end of our last video um, from one of the previous fights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our werewolf warrior do his job and become our tank. I'm thinking that if I do that, so there's no guarantee that he's going to be the focus because he doesn't have the taunt mechanic on him. So we'll just, uh, you know, give him the armor just and hope for the best. That's unfortunate that we have to do that, but it's the way it works. Yeah, so he took the hit. That's good. That's awesome. Front hero. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have you transmit that. We'll use you to get two energy. So you'll see at the bottom we have our turn economy right here. We have five energy that we can currently play with. And then we have three energy we're going to get at the beginning of the next round. The yellow pips carry over. So if you don't use all your energy like we did in the case with like Andron or uh, Magnus, we'll get four energy next round something to really be mindful of when you play your game and when you go through your game to understand how uh, the characters interact with each other and how they um, might synergize. So we'll give him the elemental shield because he's going to take some elemental hits and then we'll end our turn. Now the magic user and your healer typically have, and I say typically, they have good synergies between uh, each other where your magic user turns uh, your uh, healer or your holy damage dealer into a, a cannon, but they are your mana battery, mana battery or energy battery to do that. But there are different characters that you can get. You're not locked into these four characters. I believe there's 
8 and 16 total characters that you can get for your games that you might want to look into and play. So, you know, keep that in your back pocket when you're playing through on your own. Um, I'm going to focus on the initiated and we'll finish him. Mm, no, we'll focus on you. And what are you going to do? Are you going to heal? Nope, they're going to summon a fire imp, which is fine. So... Let's do Foresight on you, and does anyone need to heal? Nope, we'll just hold on to that for the next round. Of course. Alright, what are you doing? Okay, Dispelling the Flame and then gaining armor. Okay. Oh, well, heroes. Well, let's armor up then. And then when you go, this imp is going to die. But I'm going to have you target this one and focus on dispatching it. Yep, and it's, that's going to go. But you're probably going to draw your like uh, melee attacks, a bunch of them. Only the one. That's okay. All right, so let's do that. And unfortunately, one, two, three. Yeah, so let's just finish this imp off here. And we'll just continue to armor up because this imp will be uh, dispatched uh, when he goes. So we don't need to waste our energy is what I'm driving at. You want to hold on to it for the next round. See? Gone. And that was from the lightning charge that's uh, the spark debuff. So you want to make sure this game is wonderfully tooltip leading into being a good session gameplay game where you if you put it on a shelf and you forgot what you were doing you can mouse over everything and it tells you exactly what's going on and the exact synergies or um, uh, buffs and debuffs that are currently flying around the map now you have an evasion so i might as well just leave you alone but it doesn't fall off so you know what we'll just do this and then watch they don't seem to care too terribly much, which is fine. We don't need them to care, we just need them to perish. There, okay. And we do have uh, this, which will help us dispatch. Uh, okay, so let's do this real quick. Got rid of all the burn. And then... Let's do that on you, because you seem to be the most uh, missing of health, as it were. And then we'll have you zappy zap and zappy zap. And then I suppose might as well give the armor to you and heal yourself. There you go. All good. Heal back up to full. Or, yep, full. Nice, nice. Um, so the mechanics that I have currently going, uh, like I said, are very neutral with uh, regards to like the playstyle that you could lean into for each of these characters. Um, your scout can be a bard. I mentioned that where you can actually get songs and uh, those uh, songs can cascade and buff your allies or damage the enemy. Um, uh, your tank can turn into a uh, almost like a fury warrior where they damage themselves and then unleash that damage on the uh opposing faction um your caster can become uh just in a giant aoe nuking uh damage dealer that throws so many debuffs their whole bottom of the uh, enemy's side is just littered with pain and suffering um and then uh your healer doesn't have to be a healer they can quite literally be a damage dealer and that's kind of the mechanic that i'm leaning into them with in this playthrough um case in point i'm actually going to pick up i think this card right here and call it, yeah, there. And then dispel the flame? Oh no, dis dispel, okay, I see. Um, I'm not gonna take that. I'll just take these crystals for now. Mm -hmm. We don't have any spells that are, or any abilities that uh, go into the stanzas. The, the, the stanzas are the uh, song mechanic, and you can see that the song spell or spell is the very top uh, bracket or box for that. So I'm just going to take this, and then I'm actually going to leave everything else on the table. So deck bloat is a huge problem in this game. You can really get yourself into a bind when you start picking up too many cards. And I, my 
notion is unless you have significantly good um, card draw mechanics, you don't want to go above, say, 25 or 30 cards. Otherwise, you're really hamstringing yourself with trying to get uh, what you need to get to win the fights. All right, so we have an event here, the Imp Altar. At the end of the hallway, you find a large stone statue of an imp. Although the placement of the statue is suspicious, it's clear that it is used as an altar of some kind. You found imps before wandering around freely, and this statue may have something to do with it. What do you want to do? Uh, we can leave it, we can examine it, we can smash it, or we can threaten our pig man hostage because we used the rope in our bag of tricks that we had picked up from another event to tie them up. We can mouse over the dice and see what the probability is. And I'm just thinking we just do this. We might as well, we have him to ask. You promise the pigman that you will free him if he tells you how the altar works. He goes behind the statue and presses a button. A secret door opens. As promised, you untie the pigman and keep the old rope. The pigman runs off towards the exit. We got a bonus room. Nice. So had we not done that, we would not have been able to get access to this bonus room. Uh, might as well go into it then. An ephemeral potion. The secret door takes you to a room with a large chest. You open the chest and see some items that might be useful. Among them, a bright orange potion catches your eye. As soon as you take the potion out of the chest, its contents begin to disappear. If you don't no, you don't know if this is drinkable, but there is no time. You can only drink, only one person can drink this before it completely vanishes. Who will drink it? The fates decide who will drink it. Competition the highest. I, uh, let's do that. I, I don't, I don't mind letting them see who gets it. I don't really have a preference. Those two got a two, so they were tied. Zero, zero, so they're tied. One, two, so, all right, our caster. Heat Surge, on draw, so when this card is drawn, they draw one more card, dispels the flame, they gain one energy and uh, insulate, so magic uh, damage, so cold and fire and lightning. That's awesome, that's great. Okay, so no, that wasn't poison, is what it boils down to. You, When you drink the potion, you notice your body warming up. After a brief moment, you feel a strain, uh, feel a surge of energy within you and your body temperature drops again you don't know exactly why but you believe that this phenomenon will repeat itself again okay awesome take the items left in the chest so now we get to pick some items hooray now let's see here throw pebble oh there is um so I didn't mention this before, but I will mention it now. There's actually a really good Tome of Knowledge encyclopedia for what you've unlocked and the card, you know, the enemies you fought and everything like that. And then you can actually search inside here for um, things that you might not know. So let me see if I can find Pebble and see what comes up. I don't think I've actually gotten that item before. Oh, right there. So random monster. Okay, so I have gotten that. So I ran, so every turn we throw damage out randomly four damage out so that's not terrible and then there's an epic version of it which does five damage and bleed oh okay all right so that's good to know so that's just basically free dps if nobody has anything in their potion slot right now good to know i think what i'm going to do though i do definitely want to lean into you doing the sacred tablet because you didn't have a weapon um that's not nearly as good as what you have because you you don't really have a club you have yeah okay i can give you this and that might work out but i do like having you getting a little bit more armor or starting with thorns that would be nice well, but that replaces the shield. So why don't we do that? Why don't we give you uh, plus two to all resistances? And then you do range damage, but I think having you throw a pebble will be more comedic in a lot of ways. And then I think I'll just take the money. I don't think I need you to have this at the moment. I'll just take the money. 
All right, summoning ritual. Let's see what goes on. The summoning ritual. You reach the end of the basement, and here you can see many cultists in a summoning circle. The summoning has begun, and from a number of cultists, it does not seem like you just a normal imp will show up. They become aware of your presence near the ritual, and some cultists leave the circle to confront you. The cultist looks at you suspiciously, waiting for an answer. Tell them you're new here. 21%. I, I don't want to have any uh, bad modifiers in my deck. As you can see, we have, I think it was a broken bone. Yeah, a broken bone from trying to do something earlier that we failed. So I'll just fight them. They react a little slowly, and you start the fight with some advantage. I'll take it. I'll take whatever advantage I can get. And there's that every turn. Five damage. I'll, yep, that works out in our favor. So we'll armor up and draw a card. Oh, broken bone. Darn it. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, I think I want to dispatch the casters first if I can, though. So we'll, we'll use our ranged attacks to try and whittle them down. Uh, this will be great. So if I do the howl, they will go slower, and then we'll all act before they do, which is awesome. Get some fortify, and then basically just, yeah, you just armor up. I don't think they're going to do 57 damage this turn to us, so... I'll save one energy. I may regret that, but we'll see. Oh, nice. There's, uh, so we're going to give ourselves two energy. So we're up to eight. And then I'm going to give two energy to Reginald. And then I will zap you twice. Actually, I'll do it three times. And then I'll hit you with lightning. Unfortunately, fire is not really going to do too terribly much to these guys, which is understandable because they're, you know, fire affinity. Evoker, evoker, a fire brander. Okay. What are you going to do? Put a fire brand in the top of target's deck, and they're going to just buff himself. Okay. Good to know. Um, let's just lean into dispatching you guys in the back. I don't think... Oh, uh, yeah, our caster took a little bit of a hit, so we'll do that. Great, awesome. So they're just going to buff themselves. And then try and get through our shield, but they can't. Mwahahaha. Oh no, they're not actually attacking, which is fine. All heroes take Firestorm. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh my. Yep, random damage, dispatch them, very handled, very nice to have that. So basically, I'm going to discard these two and get those out of your deck, because we don't need those. That came up at the right time. Um, don't really need to do the uh, adrenaline, because there's no reason to cause ourselves to lose a card draw to get two energy. Yeah, I'll just I'll hold off on that for now. All right, and then I'll do Enrage, draw a card, give myself two energy, and I will shield everybody, and then, um, sure, might as well give it to Reginald and to Evelyn, and then I'll lean into the bleed mechanic so that you'll take eight damage on the beginning of your turn, which is great, because then you'll get that little bit more damage done. Oh, I'm glad I put the shields on them. So their decks are automatically built to synergize with themselves and with their teammates. So make sure that you're doing the same thing. Otherwise, you will not have a good time. Uh, let's do Insulate there. Um, you know what? Let's just dispatch you because I don't want you to have a turn. And then... Yeah, sure. Right there is fine. Okay, did I get anything that's worth craziness? Um, got a few things. If I do that, and then I do Sacred Bolt. There, and then just do Flash and Flash, and then yeah, sure. Give you a little bit of armor for next turn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, now, if I do that to you, you take three damage more. Let's draw another card. Perfect. So if I do that, you will be destroyed. And then I will submit you there. Perfect. Excellent. According to plan. And we're still in the great. We're not in the excellent, but we're still in the great. So there's a grade on how well you do and how quickly you dispatch the enemy. Um, make sure you're trying to you know, maximize that utility for yourselves. Um, otherwise, you're not going to get the best rewards at the end of the fights. Okay. And then he's gone. Awesome. We win. And now we get to pick some new cards. Hmm. Scroll of speed is... We've already passed on that once. This could be fun to have. Yeah, I don't think I want... I mean, I could take the barricade. That wouldn't be terrible. Hmm. I'll take the barricade. I won't take anything right now for Andrin. I mean, there's not really, it's not, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not, it's very expensive. I know I'm going to take this for Reginald here. Do, do, do. I don't know. I think I'm going to pass. All right, Lord of the Imps. The ritual ends. The room filled with red smoke and the temperature rises rapidly. Rose rapidly. You don't know if it's well or if it went well or not, but all the remaining cultists start to flee in panic after realizing what they've done. An impressive imp appears before you. It's the greater demon Belfior. The Lord of the Imps, Belfior. What do you want from me, mortal? Although he's been weakened by the precarious summoning conditions you can't underestimate him leave well we were just passing through killing the cultists can we leave that's a 70 percent chance uh i don't know if we want to do this or not let's see here he's weakened now is a good time to check before he uh uh i don't want to be a gambler and just get another debuff so let's just fight him fool yeah, the fight begins so we don't get another another uh we'll say bonus oh wow 386 health that's huge but he took a rock to the face because we pelted him with a slingshot so take that evil imp lord <laughs> andrin's coming in here with rocks and he's got a pipe and a stabby object um he's naturally strong against fire but he's weak against ice okay good to know I'm sure he's going to summon some cronies. I just have a... Call it a hunch. But I just know he's going to. Oh, that worked out really well. So we'll do that. And then that worked out even better. Um, I don't know. Do I want to do this? Yeah, I don't think they're going to act this round. I think he's just going to do some buffing and some things of angriness. So let's do that right there. Yep. Self lose 40 health. Summon an imp. Okay. Yeah, lose 40 health, summon him. Okay, that worked out in our favor. You can whittle your own health down as much as you want, and I have no qualms about it. We'll transmission and energize Reginald. We'll give ourselves two energy. Not really helpful. We'll do that, and then we'll zap this one, and I don't know why I didn't read the bottom of this card. Equals my hand size. I should have done that one the first. Oh, well. If you ever feel like you want to replay combat and try again, there is a mechanic up here to re literally reload the combat and try over again. There's also a command up here for resign, uh, resign where you can just stop, you know, resign from the combat. You know you're not going to win, and you can just scrap that run, and get whatever go gold and crystals for your next run. Um, let's see, do I want to do that? Or do I want to do that? Let's see here. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could do this a bunch. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, let me do this one first because that gives me the power, the blessing, uh, damage done, and healing done. 
And then if I lean into that, and then apply that, it'll go three more times there. Yep, propagates that way. And then do I want to hit you? Do I want, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight just the big guy. Just keep on hitting him. I've never been good enough to get a, uh, a one round win. So if you happen to be that good, good on you. I am not. Uh, I think I want to keep all of these. Uh, do I want to focus on the imp? Focus on you and then slash you like that. You're down to one and then 27. Yeah, that works out really well. So holy damage, if you... A um, little bit of meta game knowledge that I can impart on you from what I know. Holy game, holy resistance, this onk... Uh, it's not what you think it is. It's yeah, it, their holy resistance is down, but make sure you read the entire tooltips in this game. The attacker suffers uh, heals three HP when this target uh, is hit by an enemy. So the attacker, meaning I get to heal every time I attack someone with this. It's not just holy damage that does more, but it's also my melee attackers can benefit from hitting those specific targets. So make sure you're looking at that when you're playing your games. Um, and I only have the one. Let me, uh, I'll spread it around, I suppose. Well, I mean, I have that. Uh, will I be able to finish you? I'll get you close. Yeah, sure, might as well. Lean into it. Random hero, nice, okay. Random hero, nice. Yep, oh, all heroes, these. And then puts them in all of our decks. Okay, fair enough. There's that. And then you're gonna go. But if I zap you, you're not gonna do the seven damage. So I think I'm going to hit you. There. And then do the insulate there and call that turn good. Oh no, you're empowered. Oh dear. Um, I don't have like a crazy good board wipe ability. I wish I did, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, to my hand size, huh? So if I do... Well, no, I wanna... Two, four, five, that's free. Okay, so I have... Okay, I can actually empty out my hand here. So if I do... Oh, I should've done this one first, sorry. And this one next. There, because then it'll give me the a few more blessings. Even though this is hand size, it's still better to do it, I think, here. Because then I'll do that. And then buff you up. Nice. And then they're sitting pretty low. It's where we can just chew through these guys pretty easy in the next... I think the next round... I'm thinking the next round we can win? Let's see. Um, let's draw. Oh, uh, that's not really a good draw. You will not finish your friend there, but you know what? I can for you. There, and then we'll call that good. And then, do, do, do. Apply a shield. Apply a shield. There, and then, yeah, just... You're gonna take 10 damage. You could have taken 18, but eh, it's okay. Yep, take another 40 off of you. That's fine. I don't mind that at all. Oh yeah, you're you're done. You're done. There. You know what? I kind of need Reginald to go. So he can heal us. And of course he doesn't get any heals. That's fine. That's okay. We'll just end it. Okay. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Let's see here. Well, that's nice to get that one. Um, not another deflect. Dark ritual. We don't have any, like... None of these are speaking to me. That's nice, but it's still very expensive. Three? Hmm. No. No. I mean... Hmm, that's nice, but you know what? Fine, I'll take that one. 
All right, let's see here. A great feat. Unfortunately, Andrin did not get that all the experience for the because uh, he failed to roll in our previous episode. A great feat. You defeated a greater demon. Although he has not died, he is returned to his plane of existence and will take time to recover. Still, it's no small achievement. It is a great achievement that must be celebrated. There should be some magic shards in the demon's remains. But now, and now that the basement is empty of cultists, you can loot. Yeah, of course I'll loot. There. Nice. Awesome. So we're coming up on time for this video, so I'm going to do the looting as quick as I can. Oh, wow. Plus that searing blast. I think that will go for you. There. Um... No, I don't want to do that. I don't want this five damage searing blast. That could be funny, but at the same time, is it? Uh, none of these are really like crazy, super good. Only this one was really like, I might pick this one up just to have it. Sure. Might as well pick that one up and then yeah, I'll take the money and then I'll take the money. I'm going to call that one good. There. And then now you'll see that we have uh, uh, Belfiore's uh, horn in our inventory now, in addition to the rope. Leave in the basement. Leave in the basement after you rest a while and thoroughly inspect the basement. There's nothing left. You leave. You walk through the dead cultists, etc. And now we're back on the map proper. So that was a fun little video about Across the Spire. I enjoy this game immensely. I think this is a lot of fun. And now you can see that if we actually go here, we can use this horn to do something. I don't know what. We'll find out in our next episode. I'm going to do the level up mechanic. I'm going to do the, um, uh, we'll say clerical stuff that I need to do. And then I'll kick the next episode off on our path towards this uh, this node right here. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I've had a lot of fun with this game. Wishlist this game when it comes on sale. I highly encourage you to, to get it for yourself just because it's a really fun game for the session gameplay series where you can pick it up and put it down and then pick it up at a later date and you don't feel like you missed anything and at any point you can pause this game save it and come back to it later you can restart combat if you need to if you get into a situation where you forgot to do something or you're not remembering the statuses of the uh the cards that you have and everything like that and then there's that meta progression that's really cool and you have 16 different characters that do all truly play different inside their respective roles of tank and scout and uh, magic user and healer so highly recommend the game i love it it's a lot of fun uh, but until next time i hope you have some good luck i hope you have some fun out there this was busy gamer dad like comment subscribe if you so choose but just watching the video is enough for me thanks so much bye